Yes, are we good to go? Yeah? Okay. Well, welcome to this presentation. Also, the guys in the video room where I've been spending most of my time this conference. Um, so, hi. <laughs> um, so, I'm going to start with a short introduction and then we'll make a scaling VI, um, build that up to a class hierarchy that scales stuff, and then add interaction, which is in the title of the pre this presentation, but it's quite at the back of the presentation. Uh, we are going to decouple the scaling and some afterthoughts. So if you have any questions, just uh, do it while I'm talking. Uh, raise your hand. It's okay. So I didn't get an introduction, but my name is... Uh, I didn't get an introduction, there. <laughs> <laughs> my name is... Uh, Good one, yeah. <laughs> so my name is uh, Wiebe Walstra, but you can call me Wiebe. Uh, uh, most people, most English people do that, so. <laughs> you can remember we be, right? <laughs> <laughs> so when Darren started the keynote yesterday, I heard, uh, was the first time I heard uh, our giants are female. So immediately I thought uh, um, Liskov, of course, because I do a lot of OO. And then Sam mentioned that. Um, Sam is probably the one who um, mentioned it on the forum, so plus one for her. Um, but then uh, at the bar yesterday, I found a group of local giants, female giants, and they uh, put this on the wall. Um, it's a bit of a deed, but uh, I thought it was quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, I think I just <laughs> use this one. Right. <laughs> it's not mine, it's not mine. I didn't make it up. And all the other ones had um, portraits of the giant, female giant. So this is <laughs> the only one I could find. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, I guess that's uh, art. <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, the last joke. The test is all boring. Um, so what are dynamic planes? Um, so in this presentation, I will talk about dynamically hiding and showing or creating and um, removing planes from the front panel and also the scaling of the content in the planes. Uh, I, I hope that uh, matches the expectations. So the code that I'm showing is not a product. It's not finished. It's not polished. Um, however, the code is working for me pretty well, it's flexible, and it's going to be freely available. Um, I am going to admit, uh, omit a lot of details, so there are a lot of nitpicky stuff going on in the library. I'm just going to leave it out, or we won't finish in 45 minutes. Uh, I, I hope I'm not leaving out details that will um, uh, make the concept less clear. I made an effort, but I'm not sure how I succeed. So this is the product where I needed it. So often people ask me, why do you find the time to make libraries like this? Well, I have a customer who pays me for it. <laughs> um, it's, um, it gives you stuff to do where you don't have a choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, I mean, they have been paying me for uh, three years now, so there's a lot of stuff in this project. So uh, I'll, I have shown it more often. It's um, very good customer to have. I'm just going to show how that works. No, not close. Resize. So this is how it started. Um, this is already um, not really possible with LabVIEW because you have over here you have the labels and the graphs and the labels don't scale vertically and the graphs do. So you cannot simply make five panes uh, and put your stuff in there unless you put splitters here. Um, but then, of course, the requirements kept adding and the customer wanted to have stuff like this, oh. just adding panes. Now, these, these five are not, this is one pane with five skills and they scale proportionally, but the other panes I can scale. And everything in it should scale. 
So that was quite a challenge. So it started with a fixed number of graphs and then we needed dynamic graphs. And one thing that I usually do to show off this application is this one. So the old graph is hiding. And uh, now we have a 3D vision of the volume rendering. So that's completely off, topi off, off topic, but I'll show it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so a scaling VI. Um, how many people have tried to make a scaling VI once? Yeah. So it's not easy, right? Um, Making a VI that scales everything or anything is a bit of a problem. And the uh, cause of that is that, well, you can set the position of a G object, but the G object bounds is read only, so you cannot use it to set controls or the size of controls. Uh, in short, uh, set size is a pain. I Usually I have notes in my sheet here and the presentation over there, so I cannot see what, what's on the next sheet because I am going to do lab view coding soon and then I want to do it on this screen. So I only have one screen, so I sometimes uh, what's in the next sheet is a surprise for me as well as for you. <laughs> 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 so the solution of the scaling is um, an API call and the API call is to labview.exe. So that is the instance of labview that we are running in. Uh, and if you're in the runtime, it will automatically switch to the runtime. And there's a function in there that is called resize object from ref. And if you use that one, if you, yep, photo. <laughs> if you configure that correctly, you get something like this. And this one will size everything. Uh, there's one catch, and that is that it works on the uh, delta X and delta Y. So you make a small wrapper around it. You don't want it to scale if the delta width or height is zero. That's just performance. And then you make another wrapper that reads the bounds, calculates the delta, uh, and sets the size. Then there are graphs. Graphs are a little bit more difficult because uh, when you size them, the graph area gets, gets messed up. So there's a specialized case for graphs that to correct that and also subpanels need a little bit more attention. Um, for subpanels you can just use the bounds. So that's a specialization for subpanels and graphs. Um, I'm not going to show the details. You can look in the code if you want that. But uh, more wrapping around the VI. Uh, this wrapping, what does it do? <coughs> Oh, oh yeah, it sets the size as well as the position, optionally. So you don't have to follow this, just look at the code if you want. Uh, but the bottom line is we have a VI that scales everything. Questions so far? Yes. Yeah, you can use this as a standalone or you can use the library. It's um, a good thing to know when you do front panel scaling. And the DLL, I think, I found it before, but it's also used in the um, object resize drop-down window of your front panel. So if you dig into that code, you will eventually, <coughs> eventually find this DLL that does all the work. What's the difference really between this and using the built-in uh, scaling feature of PlabView front panels? Which scaling feature? <laughs> scale. <laughs> scale objects while for, uh, when front panel resizes. Well, if you configure uh, a control to size on your front panel, it will always size in both directions, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, and in my case, I have a label that has a height and you don't want it to resize if mm -hmm. you... I'm using splitter to avoid that. Splitter that are locked. Yeah, you can do that, but it will get complicated very fast. Also, you cannot have overlap and you cannot dynamically uh, show or hide splitters. Um, so you can use it for scaling in some circumstances, okay. but... Yeah, you have more flexibility. It is very limited, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thanks. I was going to start with um, the limitations and the um, options in LabVIEW, but I think 
would think most of you know our lab here is limited on the front panel, but uh, that was a good question, yeah. I'm going to show examples that will demonstrate how this is very convenient. So the, uh, the VI that we have that does the scaling, I am going to scale to object-oriented. So what I do is I make an initialization VI that carries all the information on how to scale, and then the resize will execute the resize. I have uh, this VI reference so that the resize can do uh, different panel updates if uh, desired. Uh, also to keep it flexible, because you might want to uh, have a class resize controls that are on, a, on another sub VI's panel. So I just keep this for flexibility. So now this is the UML. Um, pretty plain so far. But I will give a demo of what we can do now. Uh, well, this is the <coughs> most trivial one. I have a rectangle and I can size it and my control will resize. I'm going to... Um, this is on the next one. Because we are not going to just always resize in a rectangle, uh, I'm going to define a rectangle, and then I'm going to use this formula to scale objects in this bound. Uh, so this is just a linear equation, uh, and I can use it like this. So with these options, it will scale, these options will scale the Boolean in the full rectangle, and we, we can actually toy with that. So in this example, I have a decoration that will scale in the full bounds that I'm giving. And over here, I'm going to split the right side in half. And now I have, it will nicely split the Boolean in the half of my rectangle. Uh, here's a little bit more. <laughs> So you cannot do this with paints, if that. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to uh, initialize four of those rectangles and resize them all. And now we can resize the four booleans. Ah, that part, if you go negative, then it goes wrong. <laughs> 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 that is okay, because we're not going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be part of a bigger, well, I'm not going to say framework, but uh, bigger, bigger piece of code. Um, so here I also uh, wired the B. So this is a, a and the AX, and this is plus B. That might be a little bit hard to get at first, but um, basically it gives an offset to the scaling. And that gives us the power to do stuff like this. Um, so my rectangle changes and both controls scale proportionally, but this one will always keep 10 pixels distance from the right and this one 10 pixels from the left. And that also solves my problem of the graph and the label. I'll show the diagram first. Uh, just a little bit of explanation over here. Um, the um, X skills full scale on both controls, and the graph skills doesn't scale the top. Both do, don't scale the top, but the graph scales the bottom, and the label does not. But the label does have a fixed offset of 20, and the graph also on the top. So <coughs> we have a label that scales in the pane or in the rectangle and the graph that scales. Um, so that's exactly what I needed. Clear so far? Everybody gets this? Yes? <laughs> Do you take into account your font size? Because if no, that's a good question. No, font size. Uh, 
is not in this. Yeah. Um, I think it could be added, but it's in general very difficult. Yeah. Uh, I know what I will say. That's fixed in next gen, but I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not sure if it is, but uh, I think uh, next gen is. Uh, I, I don't think th that will be fixed in current gen. Let me say. Demo for this. I did, did a demo for this, right? Yeah. So now, our, now we are going to use this single class and put it in a class hierarchy. So what we, what I eventually want is I have um, a, a full rectangle and it's split into three um, bounds, and then I want to put my controls there. So in this use case, it's very convenient to actually make a class that contains an array of objects. Uh, and then the resize of, uh, I labeled it viewpoint, <laughs> the resize of the viewpoint will just, in a for loop, resize all the objects that it has. So the code would look like this. Uh, we initialize the objects as before, put it in a viewport, and then the resize will, view, will resize the viewport. And then, if it's not clear, uh, if you're new to, IO, uh, to uh, OO, the class wire will contain an array of uh, objects. Uh, I can demonstrate that as well. It's not that exciting, um, just to prove that it works. Uh, so as before, this works. I'm not sure what the level of OO is in the room. Uh, but, uh, oh, that's the next one. Um, so I also want a divider because the viewport will resize all the controls in its, um, in the given bounds, but a divider will actually um, use the viewports and divide it over, uh, over its bounds. So it's pretty similar. Uh, we have a divider, we initialize it with an array of viewpoints, and then the divider will resize each few, few point. Uh, also a demo. No. This one is not ordered for convenience. Uh, it's always one more bug. Um, so over here we have objects, more objects put in viewpoints, uh, put them in the divider, and the divider will, in this case, split it 50-50. Um, and it will scale the graphs and the labels as before, but now in two viewpoints. Ah, that's nice. It starts over again. Uh, somewhere about there. Um, so, if you are used to object-oriented, this makes a lot of sense to make, to give these three classes a common parent. Um, I try to figure out why. I think it's just experience. Um, but, uh, Maybe it is because you're, you know your application is going to resize stuff. And all the code that does resize shouldn't care if you resize an object or a viewpoint or a divider. Uh, and if you give it a common parent, then it divides a parent and it doesn't care if the object is a child. So then you refactor to this. Of course, I started out pretty much with this, but uh, to build up the story, uh, you can think, ab think about it like this. So now we have a resize object that doesn't do anything, and it has objects. Um, of course, <coughs> we are not done yet, because what if the splitter has a splitter? 
the splitter can now only have a viewpoint, a viewport, the viewport can only have objects. Uh, but the viewport port might also have a splitter and the splitter might also have a splitter, right? So this is more to the point. Now the splitter has an object and it doesn't care if it's a viewpoint or an object or a splitter. Of course, this is also one of the reasons why you want a common parent, but... Um, So the next step is to realize that the viewpoint, viewport and the splitter are mostly the same. So every function that I'm going, and I now only have a resize, but all the functions that will be added, I need to, in the viewpoint and in the splitter, put a for loop and do that for all the items. So I'm going to make a container object and have the viewpoint, a viewport and the splitter inherit from the container. And now I only have to loop over all the container items in this class, and I only have to make it once, right? So that's the kind of laziness that you want to have as a programmer. Um, so how does the container know uh, how it should resize the viewport port of the splitter? Well, you, you give it a distribute uh, method that's private, so, uh, sorry, protected and the viewport will implement it, and the splitter will implement it. And then the container calls the distribute, and for the viewport, it will all be the same bounds for every object, and the splitter will split it proportionally. Clear so far? Is this uh, clear? So one thing to note is that there are two hierarchies. So this is the class hierarchy, but in your application you also have the object hierarchy. And it's the same code, but um, this is a sort of object-oriented magic that you, that you get with this kind of code. You have a sort of recursiveness, a uh, sort of hierarchy, um, but it's not always clear to people listening to presentations that this is what's happening. So here I have a splitter, and the top splitter has another splitter, uh, vertical splitter or no, whatever. It splits the screen in two and so it's a hierarchy of objects. So adding interaction. Um, so the first step is um, to be able to show or hide objects. So I give the parent class a label, a set label method. Um, and all the children will automatically also get the label, of course. And I give it a method to show or hide labels. Then if the object is a container, then of course it has to iterate over all the labels. And that looks like this. It calls the parent method because the, the, split, the container itself is an object, so it calls it parent. And then it calls all its items. And then we have a way to show or hide. Object. So we initialize the object over here, add a label, one, two, three, uh, zero, one, two, three, put it in the view, viewport, and then in a loop we are going to show one of the um, objects. By, by its label, right? So here's an array of labels, it loops over it and it shows or height. And the resize will actually trigger the action. So uh, the show or height doesn't hide because you might want to hide 50 controls, but the uh, resize will activate it. So then you have something like this. Right? This is, a this is like not, not that impressive, but these are all the building steps that you need to make a full-fetched GUI. Can you be scaling that while you're doing Oh, good question. Can we scale these? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so.
So another part of the interaction is doing the resize on a panel resize, of course, because the rectangle is usually going to be the content rect of a pane of the VI. Um, and also on a pane resize, because you can have multiple panes. So this is the panel resize, this is the pane resize. Here you have a convenient trick, because if you resize a pane, you get all these events, and only when it's complete, uh, when the user is complete with resizing, the old bounds and the new bounds are the same. So you avoid the lag in scaling everything continuously. So the real question is, how are we going to put the splitters between the panes of the splitter? So I'm going to make a new class that's called the interaction class. It has um, an object, it has a multiple objects, so it, it is a container. Uh, and I add a method on mouse move. So the mouse move, um, in the mouse move event, I'm going to call the on mouse move method, and the on mouse move will call the hit splitter. So when the hit splitter is a container, it will call all its objects or all its i objects. And if the object is a splitter, it will actually see where the, if the coordinates match a splitter. Does that make sense at all? Is that so if it is a match, uh, you can resize the pane. Looks like, like this, right? So you have a, um, you initialize the interaction, you have the content rect, resize once, and on a mouse move, you are going to call on mouse move. Now the trick here is that in here, in this VI, I actually start two VIs, a horizontal and a vertical splitter. And these VIs, if there is a match, the splitter VI is going to put those VIs inside the subpanel that's on my front panel. Um, of course, the splitter stuff is all handled by a separate class, uh, just to separate the code. And so this one will show the VI, the splitter VI in the subpanel, and you can, as a user, you can start moving the splitter. And when the splitter is removed, the dynamic VI is going to post an event. The event is pane size, and on a pane size, I change the pane size and do a resize. And that's probably hard to get, but I have a demo. So here I have my, I'll show the diagram first. This has more details. Um, objects, put them in a splitter. These are the splitter sizes. Uh, this is the interaction class, the subpanel where the splitters are in, and the event. I do a resize, and then uh, this is the wrong event. But on the mouse move, you call the on mouse move. And if there is a paint size user event, I change the size and I do the resize. So now I can do this. Oh. I can do this and I can resize. And my paints will resize on user interaction. Now I started with this one. So what I did here is I actually made the sub panel that's dynamically loaded uh, not transparent anymore, so you can see what's happening. So the moment the user does a mouse move and it hits a slider, it will show the subpanel with a VI in it, a uh, vertical slider, and you can grab it. And when you release it, the subpanel is hidden and the panes are scaled.
I'm going to show one more thing in the previous example. I think it's in there. Yep. So these, graph, th these viewports are also labeled, so I can still probably, yeah, like show or hide the individual panes of the panel, right? So that's the, the whole point of this uh, class. Um, and it's going to do pretty much the same thing. So decoupling, uh, what do I mean by decoupling? So for now we have um, a while loop with events and of course if you have a main VI that needs to be skilled, you don't want those events in your main event. So it's now going, th this might be a bit difficult to grasp, but uh, this event you don't want in your main VI. So what I did, I made of course another child of an object, another class, um, and this one, actually contains an iteration class uh, by reference, so a DVR. And all the methods that are here, and over here I iterate over its contents, over here I need to unreference, dereference the DVR and call the method. Um, so that's a hassle, but um, it's worth the effort. Um, the init will create uh, or start a dynamic event handler. Of course, it's uh, re-entrant. You can have multiple ones. And then there's more initialization. Over here, I have the interaction object. Uh, resize once, put it in the DVR, and the DVR goes in the dynamic event handler. More initialization, uh, mostly details. I register for the event, so the my main, uh, my main MMI can get the events of a resize. And I will demo that. Mm. Basically, it looks, it, look, it looks exactly the same, except for uh, all this code that was here. Uh, I need this one or my VI will stop. Um, it will still stop, but not during the presentation. Um, yeah, so I think in here there's, um, I can still show or hide, no, there's no showing or hiding in here. So basically this just shows that it works. advanced by reference, my, vi my VI is not running, so it won't scale. Uh, over here, I, uh, I'll have some uh, more showing and hiding, so um, over here, I have a viewport that's labeled one, two, three, four, five, uh, sorry, zero, one, two, three, four, five, but this one is also labeled A, and this one is labeled B, and I can now show or hide one or the other. Right, so that's the flexibility that we want. You can still uh, sh um, scale the objects. This one has a maximum. That's something that I didn't go into, but it has a maximum, so you cannot make it larger than uh, the given size. There's also maybe this one. It has a minimum, yeah, so you cannot make it smaller. Um, you can also hide everything, so <laughs> that's uh, that's up to the user of the of the library to prevent if that's not desirable. Ten minutes. Some afterthoughts. So this is um, the object hierarchy of my VI that I showed at the beginning, the project. It's pretty complicated, but there are like a lot of objects. Um, so for me, this is acceptable for what it does. Uh, you can of course make a VI that does this by reference or by labels or XML file or whatever. So all this will be replaced by a VI. 
Uh, for me, that's just obfuscation that's not needed. Um, if something is a hierarchy of objects, why not have this on your diagram? Yeah. For me, that works. There's more on the diagram that's on that side, but I'm not showing that. <laughs> Um, this plays nice with subpanels, so I'm now scaling graphs and labels, but you can scale subpanels and you can put everything you want in the subpanel. You can even have a VI in there that scales uh, the same way. Um, so it's very uh, hierarchical, you can extend. You can also, yeah, you, you can go both ways. You can scale subpanels and you can put stuff that scales inside subpanels. There's much more icing on the cake. So the min-max we already saw. Uh, you can do hit detection. Um, the show height is not, a, is not a string, but you can actually use a regular expression. So you can say, okay, show all the, show all the objects that have a one in there or a two or a number or whatever. You can query visibility. There are some events uh, that signal that a skill is done. Uh, there's a container that switches between uh, array elements. So you can switch between view A or view B or view C, just co for convenience. Um, there's an event that you can send to update the objects in a container. And what's coming if my customer puts it on the backlog uh, is the loading and storing of screen settings. So you get all the load all the sizes and visibility, uh, store it, reload it. So I, as always, I need a place to put this online. Uh, I have to figure that out someday. Um, documentation, examples, manual, it's not there. Uh, examples, but no manual or documentation. And the last thing that I want to let you know is a nasty bug in LabVIEW. And that is if you are going to do this kind of recursion in classes, at some point you will change the private data of a class and the recursion will stop working. You won't get an error, you won't notice anything. If you save and you reload, it's still there. Um, the only way I found to fix it is to change the connector pane of a parent class back and forth and that will trigger a recompile and then it will work again. Uh, but it's very nerve wracking if you're if you have a recursion and it works and you change the thing and it stops working altogether, that's like spooky. <laughs> um, so it can be tricky to find out what happened. Uh, I actually have a VI that uses scripting that goes over all the VIs in my parent class and triggers the connector pane back and forth. So <laughs> they all stop, start working again. So I can reproduce it. So anybody of NI is interested in it, I can, I can show this. Um, it's in 2013, so it could be that it fixed. it's fixed by now. I haven't checked. So, questions? Yes. So, you found that you could uh, use uh, the, this DL, DLL call to resize, but why? How come uh, the, you can't set the bounds, but you can do it in from the DLL? There must be s some reason that, uh, and I did this, is, is there some limitation? Can it uh, be uh, used oh in runtime? Or? Yeah, uh, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can confirm that it is, it is a limitation. <laughs> that, that is for sure. Uh, I'm not sure why. Um, I think in the G object, you have like decorations and controls and you want to scale decorations and controls, but they are not in the same hierarchy. And the parent has other classes that scaling doesn't make sense. So you cannot scale a G object um, because some of its children are not scalable. I think something like that. Also, they decided at some point that graphs don't have a bounce property to be set. You can only set the graph array. So the bounce is missing. So the parent doesn't have the bounds because not all children implement it. Uh, why? I don't know. Uh, I know it's like that. But Thank you. Yeah. I have a question. Yep. So you can uh, show and hide panes dynamically and resize stuff 
but you're still limited to the number of uh, panes that you set out at the very beginning, correct? Um, no, I don't think so, because you can actually send an event to a viewport to update its members. Oh, okay. And I only have one sub-panel that does all the, scale, all, all the sliders. So that one is recycled for everywhere where you put your mouse. Okay. Yeah, so you can, you could make it dynamic and... And add, add as many as you want then. Yeah. Okay. Um, of course, you can still, you cannot still not do dynamic controls, right? Yeah, that is correct, I guess. Yeah. But you can, you can in fact make, um, put 2,000 sub-panels on your front panel. <laughs> Uh, and I, I tested it. I have another presentation where I do that. Uh, 1,700 um, subpanels, and then you dynamically put them on the right place and fill them with uh, template controls, and it works almost as efficient as 1,700 controls. It's uh, actually no difference at all. So the subpanel implementation is really, really efficient. Yes, several. Who's the judge? <laughs> so if I understand correctly, the basis of your object hierarchy is the composite pattern, design pattern? Yeah. Uh, well, composition is, yeah, it is a pattern on its no, own. Composition and composite pattern are not the same thing. Um, for me, I always feel that this is more like a command pattern. Like you have a command that you configure and it's executed. And then the command can have other commands, and it's executed hierarchically. Hierarchically, no. you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, but on the other hand, a lot of those patterns are basically the same, only the context is different. So yeah, if you if you want to call it a comp, uh, comp um, what do you call it? A composite. Composite. Yeah, it, it has it has features of a composite and then recursive. Definitely. Over here, yeah. How would you scale that if you wanted to, instead of it just moves, make it kind of slide in and out? So like you've got animation. a timing element, sort of, yeah. Well, um, I guess on the set pain size, you have to set a flag, and then when you do a resize, instead of resizing everything, you have to start an, uh, you have to start something dynamically that will resize in a for loop, like linearly scale from start positions to end positions. I think it, it is feasible. Yeah. But of course, the um, what you would really want is have the resize insert um, a class inside the resize that specifies how you want to resize, animated or not, or like that would be really cool. Yeah. Yes, okay. One minute left, okay. Oh, yeah. Alan. Yeah. Did you say something that you want people to figure out what it is? I put it in a zip and if the presentations are distributed, um, I will distribute the zip. Um, yeah. It's more that I don't know really on the forum or online where to put it. Um, Maybe uh, I'm sure one of you uh, know. What? Tools network. Yeah. You help. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we talk about it. <laughs> Good. Yes. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs>